Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of introduction to some of the items we need for constructing a confidence interval on a population mean. So we'll start with some of the basics. It says, refer to the accompanying data display results from a sample airport data speeds in megabytes per second. So here's the inner information, and then they have some questions. Now, basically, we're looking at these parts in here. To construct a confidence interval by hand, you need to know your sample mean, and you need to know the error. This is the formula for error, and then you look inside of here, you see that we have a t statistic, a t critical value. And so we're going to focus on finding that. Now, you have to be able to be, have normal sample information, or n has to be greater than 30. So in this example, we see that n is greater than 30, so we're able to go to the t distribution because there is no population standard deviation. If there were a population standard deviation, we'd be doing a z test with a normal chart. But no sample, no population standard deviation means we're going to use a t test. Now, what's the what's a t test, and what's the difference between the z and t? Well, the key difference is that the standard normal distribution assumes that you know the population standard deviation. The t distribution is based on the sample standard deviation, which we're shown here. And let's look at a graph of it. The green portion here is the normal, standard normal z-curve. We see the t-distribution changes with the degrees of freedom. And if we get to degrees of freedom to 30, we see that the normal distribution and the t-distribution are approximately the same. So that's why we make sure that either the sample is normal in general to start with, or we have n greater than 30. Then we have these distributions matching up. Then we're able to go and do a t statistics on our set on our sample. So let's go back to here now and look at what are degrees of freedom. Because the first question is, what are the degrees of freedom you should use to find the critical value for the t test? Well, look at your n. It's n minus one. One less than the number you have or is 49. That's our degrees of freedom. Basically, in general, the number of degrees of freedom for a collection of sample data is the number of samples that can vary after certain restrictions have been imposed on all data values. Example, if 10 test scores have the restriction that their mean is 80, then their sum must be 800, right? And we can freely assign values to the first nine scores. But the 10th score would then be determined in order to make up to the 800. So in this case, there's nine degrees of freedom. The first nine can be any score. They could all be whatever. But then the last score would have to be a certain amount to make that mean still 80. OK? So that's what degrees of freedom means. So we always have one less than the number n. OK, so we have that. Now how do you find this critical value? So by hand, there's two ways to do it. By hand, in this chart, or we can use StatCrunch. I'll do both here. So we look at the directions. It says, find the critical value corresponding to a 95% confidence interval. Okay, So that means there's 5% in the two tails, right? But this means t alpha divided by 2 means to the right. So there's 2.5% to the right. If we click this button here, or you have a different table, you'll see, I'll zoom in on this, you'll see that it has an area in one tail and an area in two tails. Well, we're doing a two tails with 5.05, because 95%, right? 95% or 0 0.05 would be the would be the area in both tails. Otherwise, it's 2.5% in one tail. So this is the column we're in. And we go down to our degrees of freedom. We have 50 for n, so 49 was our degrees of freedom. I go down, I go down, I go down, and I don't see 49. I see 50, and I see 45. Well, we don't want to go to 50. That's above. So we go down to the ne next nearest one, which would be 45. So 2.014. 2.014. 2.01 would be our critical value for t. Okay, So that's how you'd find it using the chart. Now we can find it more accurately if we open up StatCrunch. And we go to Stat, and we come down to Calculator, and go to T. There's a T calculator here. 
And we have our degrees of freedom in here. We can put it in exactly as 49. Again, we're finding the right to the right. And we want our probability. Now we've got to be careful. We're only finding one tail. We're not finding both tails. We're finding one tail. We want our probability to be 2.5%, right? 0 0.025. Now we see that our number to the right is 2.009, but rounding up right, rounding to two decimal places, 2.01. It's the same uh, critical value. Now where's that critical value used? Again, in this formula to figure out E. I'll do a problem, kind of this problem again in the next video, but I just wanted to show where these values are coming from. Okay, brief general description of the degrees of freedom. Well, we already looked that up. The number of degrees of freedom for a collection sample data is the number of sample values that can vary after certain restrictions have been imposed on all data values. I hope that gives you an introduction of the parts of the T statistics.